I sacrificed my career and my life for him and all my children. And now you're going to come up with a bill that slaps me in the face again. Governor Ron DeSantis signed the bill into law, which now essentially does away with what is known as permanent alimony. This new law means that permanent alimony has come to an end in Florida. It essentially eliminates permanent alimony in the state of Florida, and it allows ex-spouses to more easily make changes to the alimony once they reach retirement. So where does your income come from now? Uh, now it comes from uh, child support. And how much is that per month? It's 25,000. 25,000, yeah. okay. Welcome to Management Highlights Daily. Shout out to Mr. Thompson for his PayPal donation and topic request. He wanted us to cover this article. Florida Governor DeSantis signs bill ending permanent alimony. Of course, we'd like to provide you with footage. So here's a clip that covers a substantial portion of what's written in this article. Judges can now reduce or terminate alimony support or maintenance payments after considering factors like the age and health of the person making the payments, the retirement age of that person's occupation, the economic impact a reduced alimony would have on the recipient of the payments, and the motivation for retirement and likelihood of returning to work for the person making those payments. Now, this bill will also set a five-year limit on what is known as rehabilitative alimony, which is intended to provide financial support to a spouse until they are financially self-sufficient. And under the new law, couples married for less than three years will not be eligible for alimony payments. And now you have to be married 20 years or longer in order to be eligible to receive payments for up to 75% of the term of the marriage. For men, this is great news. And of course, women don't like this because women are not only the biggest recipients of alimony and child support, but also the biggest abusers of alimony and child support. I don't think Natalie has ever thought of herself as someone who doesn't have the money. But she doesn't have the money to start another restaurant. She lives paycheck to paycheck. This quote unquote paycheck comes from child support and alimony, and she's spending it like crazy. More about this woman later, but this video focuses specifically on exploring this intriguing aspect of the article. Let's read. The approval drew an outcry from members of the First Wives Advocacy Group, a coalition of mostly older women who receive permanent alimony and who assert that their lives will be upended without the payments. Let's talk about it. Now it's time for us to get into this and do what we gotta do. Because we men ain't we? Yeah. We men ain't we? Yeah. Camille Malone Five-ish says the recent change to Florida's alimony laws has her wanting to change her allegiance. Well, I'm really disappointed because I'll, I'm a Republican. I voted for Governor DeSantis, and this makes me very sorry that I did. Governor Ron DeSantis signed the bill that does away with what's known as permanent alimony. A group known as the First Wives Advocacy Group is among those strongly against the new law, saying it puts older women in a situation that will cause financial devastation. Camille, who was married for more than 30 years, says she agrees and made concessions in her divorce based on getting alimony for life. Like, they don't give it out very often. It's a very rare occasion when they do give it. It's a long-term marriage. Um, the spouse that is seeking it usually has never worked um, outside of home, that is, because working in home is work. I'm so glad that she said that working in the home is work because in contrast to the husband paying permanent alimony after the marriage has ended, she's not required to continue to perform her household duties for the ex-husband. She doesn't have to cook for him, clean his house, or wash his clothes. Can you imagine the governor signing a permanent housewife bill or permanent homemaker bill? You're not married anymore. The contract has ended. Your ex-husband does not have to take care of you anymore, at least not permanently. However, context is everything. Check this out. 
I definitely spend a minimum of a half a million a year in shopping. I believe money is meant to be spent. If I want to burn it, it's up to me. But I know, I don't think you can burn money, it's illegal. Okay, take it back, no burning money. This is from a show called How to Get Rich. Finance expert Ramit Sethi works with people across the US to help them achieve their richest lives. This single mom, Nicole, is a great example of an abuser of child support and alimony, and a perfect example of why alimony should not be permanent. Disclaimer, we have to freeze and or exclude some of the clips because of copyright infringement. Patreon gang salute, you will get the original video. For those who would like to enjoy our original content and support our work, support us on Patreon. Wow. I branded it. I must say, I'm very proud of myself because I went into a business like blindfolded. I knew nothing, nothing about this business. But I believe, I had a vision that this business will have like a line around the corner mm -hmm. and it would have happened. But COVID hit mm. and it put me upside down. How much money do you think you put in? Oh, I do know how much money I put in. Let me tell you. I thought I was going to put 250,000. This was the budget. And I was so busy building this that I didn't even see how many check I was writing. Mm -hmm. Later, 1.5 million. From 250,000 to 1.5 million. Don't ask me how. Oh, wait, of course I don't have to ask, ask you me how. how. Because I don't even know how. But that's six, seven times more. I know. At 1.5 million, when did you realize, uh oh, this is in trouble? When I couldn't pay 40,000 overhead every month anymore. And I'm like, uh, how much more can I get in the home? Yeah. You know, I like basically my house had no mortgage, so I mortgaged my house to do this venture. But I didn't realize it will cost me so much. This is gold, because we talk about incompetence a lot on this channel. The reason why she was able to invest over a million into that restaurant is because she took half of her ex-husband's assets, including the house. A lot of female homeowners acquire their houses through divorce court. It's like winning the lottery. She doesn't respect the money because she didn't earn it. That's why she doesn't know shit about money, shit about business. How in the blue hell does a judge give her responsibility over this much money? We all know this system is crooked. So where does your income come from now? Uh, now it comes from uh, child support. Child support. Yes. Okay. And how much is that per month? It's twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. And how much does it cost just to live for you on a given month? With this house, it costs a lot. Probably like fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand just yeah. to keep the lights on. Yeah. Context is everything. We do not know what her marriage was like, or the reason or reasons why she divorced. But what we do know is that she receives child support and alimony. This space keeps growing because we all know that even if this woman was at fault at the end of her marriage, the divorce court would still award her alimony and child support. She could have cheated on her husband, abused him physically, mentally or financially, or just got bored of him and still got him full custody of the children child support and permanent alimony. And that's unfair. Matter of fact, her parenting skills are not fabulous either. I've seen my mom throw away a lot of her money. She'll really quickly and really easily buy an expensive handbag or a ton of clothing. And then it was difficult for her to pay for my college tuition. In this case, child support and alimony exceed the cost of living. It's ridiculous, especially how she is spending the money. Situations that reward injustice and abuse in relationships should be avoided at all costs. This is why men are opting out. It's a raw deal and women are fully aware of this. Check this out. She's been paying alimony for the last 10 years. Delgado says her ex-husband was unemployed the last five years of their marriage and was awarded permanent alimony. It hurts every time that I have to write that check, knowing that um, even in my case, I was even forced into marriage. So I shouldn't have even been married at all. This is pure gold. <laughs> 
when the shoe is on the other foot, when women get a taste of their own medicine, that is both the worst and the best realization for them. At the same time, I've said it many, 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 many times on this channel, women don't understand trade-offs. They want to have it all. Women don't respect the law of cause and effect. They keep dumping on men, keep taking them to the cleaners, knowing very well that it's unfair. And now that men refuse to get married, refuse to date because the juice isn't worth the squeeze, women like Christine Emba come up with misleading statements saying that men are lost. You can't make this stuff up. Even Stevie Wonder can see that this is a foolish deal for men. The foolishness. Can you imagine not being able to retire because you have to keep paying this cash flow catastrophe Nicole for the rest of your life just for her to spend it on shopping and Botox and shit. This woman right here married her husband when he was earning money. I'm very curious how she got forced into marriage. Context is everything. Now to be fair, we have to give credit where credit is due. This part right here. The years long effort to do away with permanent alimony has been a highly contentious issue. It elicited tearful testimony from members of the first wives group. Check this out. I was married for close to 31 years. Uh, 11 years ago, we sat down, we we're getting divorced. Um, it wasn't something I wanted. I, I wanted to stay married. My husband, had a girlfriend, so we left. These were not my choices. I was a good mom. I was a stay-at-home mom for 30 years. I raised a child that was autistic. He is now flourishing and has a career. And that's because I stayed home with him. He would not be this good. I sacrificed my career and my life for him and all my children. And now, you're gonna come up with a bill that slaps me in the face again. For everything that I've given up and everything that I've done, you're saying to me, well, retroactively, we're gonna take away what you have. And it is retroactive. We sat down and did mediation, and my ex-husband said, I really wanna keep my 401k, and he put a mortgage on my home, and I did not know that he took out this huge mortgage he said, if you will pay the payments out of the alimony and let me keep my 401k, then I will give you permanent alimony without having to go to court. I had no money to get an attorney and pay to go to court. So I took this deal and I have been fighting this bill for 10 years. Once again, context is everything. I'm a firm believer of men taking care of their responsibilities and respecting their relationships. I don't condone cheating. I associate the red pill with the truth, not with immoral behavior. I don't understand where people get this foolishness from that the red pill promotes cheating or beating your wife. The foolishness. Married for 30 years. If your wife is fulfilling all her responsibilities, she deserves recognition and appreciation. It's essential to acknowledge her efforts. However, I personally believe that permanent alimony should be banned and men should not get married in this day and age. The laws are messed up. Modern Western women in general make horrible wives. Now for the guys that are already married, alimony could be structured like a five-year deal to help her become financially independent. With support, she could pursue education or career opportunities to secure her future or she could find another sucker to take care of her. They exist. Women have been doing this for a long time. The statute was also amended to force the court to reduce or end alimony if the person getting alimony is in a supportive relationship and that does not have to be a marriage. A lot of people in their heads think, oh, well, I'm not going to marry this person, so I get my alimony still, but it, that's not the way it works. And that was the way it was forever. The, the statute just put that in writing. At the end of the day, avoid getting involved in contracts that incentivize people to break them. 
Camille has been fighting these changes for a decade and says the new law will only line the pockets of lawyers and the already wealthy. And the rest of us, the older women here in Florida, well, we're just going to be, you know, I don't know, maybe collecting government assistance. Man, that's where we working. Patreon supporters, salute! This video has officially been highlighted.